Thank you. Good evening, everybody, um, and welcome to this uh, planning meeting with one item, one very important item, Beaufort Park. Um, can I start by asking about apologies for absence, please? I've received apologies from Councillor Corinne. Thank you. Um, I note we have <coughs> Councillor Eggleston online. Can you hear yes, us? Yes, I'm here. You can hear us, lovely. Um, we also have uh, a couple of visiting councillors. Councillor Guy Gilby, who's the executive member that looks after the planning as well. And uh, Councillor Tina Eberle, who's going to speak uh, at the appropriate time. Um, so, moving on. The minutes of the last meeting to approve. Has anybody got any questions about that? Are they okay? No corrections. Um, so I, I propose that we move those as a correct record. Lovely, thank you. All those in favour? Thank you. Declarations of interest. Members are asked to declare any disclosable pecuniary interest or affected interests in respect of any matter to be con to considered at this meeting. The remainder of the um, paragraph is stated at the, on the agenda. Um, and I ask you to note that and ask if anyone does have any interests to, to declare, please. No, I think we're all right there, thank you. Any urgent items of business? Have you been notified of any? Uh, no, I've not been notified, but I can see Councillor Barnard has his ha hand raised. Thank you. Um, if you remember, Mayor, Madam Mayor, I'm sorry, Madam Chairman, sorry. Oh, wrong, wrong meeting. <laughs> wrong meeting. <laughs> Apologies, Chair. Um, I, 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 I said on Monday that um, I wanted to bring the interest of transparency attention to the fact that on Monday we had a briefing on this application on the policy implications as related to the local plan and I felt that in the interest of transparency that that matter be shared. Um, I think it was the view of those attending that in the view of officers and some members it focused solely on um, you know, the policy issues as related to this site in relation to the local plan. I think in the interest of residents present, it's important that, uh, you know, that that is recognised and noted. Um, and that, that therefore, if um, anyone, any member had any concerns raising to that, I think they could seek reassurance for those in question on that. Thank you, Councillor Barnard. Um, uh, it is true that this is the very first um, uh, item that we have um, that looked that is to use as the local plan. And there are some massive changes in our rules due to the acceptance of the local plan. And it, it was important to have a heads up about those. So um, uh, if everybody's happy that we note that that has happened. Uh, and, and we should note it was a closed briefing open only to members of the planning committee. So it would not have appeared on any meeting schedule or anything like that. So it's just referencing to make sure that everyone knows it took place specifically on those grounds. Yeah, that was going to be mentioned in the presentation. Thank you. Okay. No. Just to enliven Max's last meeting. <laughs> Thank you. That, is that noted, everyone? Yep. Thank you. Um, so, Officer Mc... Want to say McEvitt, aren't you? McEvitt, yes. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you Would you like mm -hmm. to um, present mm -hmm. this um, item to us with all the new bits of the local plan and everything? Thank, Thank you. you. I'll do my best. <laughs> Members, a supplementary report has been prepared for this item, which gives an update following the adoption of the local plan on the 19th of March. We can't hear it. Oh. Okay. Again, the supplementary report 
have been prepared for this item, which gives an update following the adoption of the local plan on the 19th of March. It includes a list of proposed conditions with the relevant local plan conditions. A site visit for members took place on Saturday the 16th of March, and as Councillor Barnard has just noted, a briefing was held for members of the planning committee on Monday the 18th of March on the implications of the emerging 2024 Bracknell Forest local plan. At that point, it was should it be adopted by the council at its meeting on Tuesday the 19th of March. This is a full application for 226 residential units, a sang, open space, access from Nine Mile Ride and South Road, together with pedestrian and cycle routes through the site and the open space. Housing is shown to be a mix of detached and semi-detached houses, together with 24 two-bedroom apartments. Uh, the bedroom mix is of two, three and four bedroom units and there is a mix also of affordable housing provided on the site. Properties will be two and three storeys in height. The site is allocated in the local plan 2024 <coughs> as a housing site for up to 230 dwellings, and it is now included within the settlement area. The western part of the site where the sang is shown remains land outside of the settlement area. As part of the allocation process, the impact of the loss of woodland on the landscape character was assessed and the allocation was considered to be acceptable with this loss of woodland in the area shown for the housing development. The previous planning application on this site for 226 dwellings was refused by the planning committee in July 2022 on the grounds of insufficient car parking, a failure to demonstrate flood risk would not be exacerbated and a failure to secure SPA mitigation measures, affordable housing and infrastructure requirements. An appeal was heard in 2023 and a section 106 agreement was completed to secure the SPA, affordable housing and the infrastructure requirements and the drainage details were also agreed prior to the appeal hearing. The appeal was heard to consider the reason for refusal relating to inadequate car parking only and the appeal was dismissed on the grounds of inadequate car parking relating to the Sang car park and the provision of triple tandem parking to serve four bedroom houses on the Spine Road. On all other matters, the inspector held that the development was acceptable. The previous application did not significantly differ in layout from the current application. On the screen now, I've, I'm showing the um, current application layout. Technology to work, it's very slow, I'm afraid. This is the current layout. And here coming up is the previous layout. So it's fairly slow and I'll try and reduce the slow down. This one was very slow, but the layout was largely unchanged from the current layout. Um, in the current application, additional car parking is provided in the Sand Car Park and um, house types have been adjusted to remove the need for triple tandem parking for the four bedroom units. <coughs> the means of access on Nine Mile Ride and on South Road, the extent of the landscape buffers and areas of loss of woodland are as shown on the previous application and were considered by the planning committee and the planning inspectorate to be acceptable. The most significant change in the planning circumstances since the previous application was considered is the adoption of the local plan and confirmation of the site as an allocated housing site within a settlement area. Matters considered by the inspector included the principle of developing what was then a draft allocation site, which was considered to be a suitable and sustainable location for residential development. 
the provision of 226 houses, which would make a significant contribution to the council's supply of housing. The application has been reported to the planning committee because more than five objections have been received. The, the site has been included as an allocated site in the local plan. Housing development is shown on land within the settlement area in that local plan. The local plan supports the development of this site as an extension to the built-up area of Bracknell by locating development adjacent to the existing office, uh, office building, the crematorium and the Great Holland's uh, recreation ground, while providing a sang on the site and retaining the existing woodland along the southern perimeter of the site to enhance the site's function in separating Bracknell and Crowthorne. This is in accordance with policy LP6 of the local plan. And the MPPF requires development proposals that accord with an up-to-date development plan to be approved without delay. The local plan is newly adopted and the proposal accords with the development plan. Affordable housing is provided above policy requirements, which are sought under policy LP16 of 35% of units. This will be secured through a section 106 agreement and also through a condition to provide additional affordable housing subject to funding through housing grants. Um, through the 106, the affordable housing will include a proportion of units to meet wheelchair accessibility standards, which also meet the requirements of elderly residents. This application has overcome the parking reasons for the dismissal of the previous appeal on the site. In all other respects, the application reflects the previous application, which was found to be acceptable on all other grounds by both the planning committee and the appeal inspector, subject to a section 106 agreement. It is considered the application overcomes the reasons the previous appeal was dismissed. And in addition, the site is now allocated a housing site and is within a settlement area. The, lay the site will have two vehicular means of access. The primary access is from the fourth arm of the TRL roundabout. Um, Side of my road there, um, with a secondary access onto South Road, just shown on there. Um, and these access arrangements are as set out in the local plan allocation, which refers to a primary access and a secondary access. The access road from South Road will serve 67 dwellings, and access to South Road will be restricted within the site by the layout, which is designed to prevent traffic cutting through the site from the roundabout. So the traffic from that South Road access will only be the traffic from this section of housing there. Three character areas have been defined throughout the development. The changing form of development across the site reflects the surrounding land, which ranges from Heathland in the west to the more development character in the east. The western portion of the site and the northwest relates to the surrounding Heathland and woodland within the eastern portion of the site. The, east, sorry, the eastern portion of the site relates to the residential area of Great Hollands and the former office building site, which is the area in white in the middle there, which is currently being developed for a housing development scheme. The buildings will have a contemporary architectural style. They will be brick built with a choice of three brick tones used across the site to distinguish the character areas. A play area will also be provided within the southern part of the site and pedestrian and cycle links provided, as I'm shown here, across the site and also within the site. of the site with the layout of there so the layout will wrap around the Taylor Winky development as is there and then we have in the north west of the park the site we have the sang land and also an area of safeguarded land of Heathland where the public will not be given access. So this is one of the plans that's been submitted as part of the SANG work that shows the connections that will be made from the SANGs in the area. So we have the Beaufort Park SANG there with its footpath links, which will have connections into the Great Holland SANG there, and then in time across Nine Mile Ride into the Butler's Park SANG to show the connectivity of the site 
and between. Okay. Sorry. Sorry, I'm doing my best. I'll try and speak up the microphone. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. The, the development will result in the, re the removal of approximately 11 hectares of woodland. <coughs> Tree removal would mainly involve the loss of plantation woodland, and the creation of the access road from Nine Mile Ride would also result in a small loss of deciduous woodland. Tree planting is proposed as part of the proposal, which could comprise approximately 637 new trees <coughs> and just over 0.3 hectares of new woodland edge planting. Although the tree proposed for removal have the landscape and visual value, the vast majority comprise coniferous monoculture plantation. An area of retained woodland is proposed to the west of the residential development with an approximately 30-metre 30 wide landscape buffer along the front boundary of the site with Nine Mile Ride. The retention of the landscape buffer along the boundary with Nine Mile Ride and retention of woodland to the west of the proposed residential development would meet the requirements of the local plan and policy LP6 of protecting the settlements of Bracknell and Crowthorne and Crowthorne and Wokingham. <coughs> the proposed planting comprises fewer trees than would be removed, so there would be a net reduction in tree cover by the time the new trees are mature. However, the planting scheme includes a greater range of species than would be removed and would therefore enhance biodiversity. The development would include trees along streets and within open spaces, including the pocket park, allowing for tree variety across the site and greening within the development. As part of the local plan allocation, the extent of tree loss was taken into consideration and found to be acceptable. The extent of tree loss has not been increased since the local plan allocation or since the last planning application was considered, and no trees of individual quality have been identified. The site is not covered by a TPO. Biodiversity net gain in excess of 10% will be achieved. On-site BNG will be required to be in place on completion of the development. The loss of the trees form part of that assessment of biodiversity net gain and the resulting gain indicate that on completion of the development and the BNG measures being implemented, biodiversity will be enhanced on the site. The Section 106 agreement will set out the BNG measures to be carried out and monitoring to ensure that they are in place and remain in place on the site for 30 years. Traffic infra for the de development is considered to be acceptable and will not result in capacity issues on the highways network. Traffic modelling has been carried out and takes into account existing traffic flows in the vicinity of the site and projected future growth, including existing commitments and future housing allocations. Parking for the scheme meets the adopted car parking standards. The apartments are provided with parking at a standard of 1.5 spaces for each two bedroom unit. Parking standards include a provision to relax parking standards for affordable housing where evidence is submitted to support this. At the last appeal into the, uh, the previous application, the inspector found that a parking standard of 1.5 spaces for a two-bedroom apartment for social rent was acceptable and the highways officer has no objection to the parking numbers. The proposal layout indicates a total of 21 parking spaces within the Sand Car Park, accessed between two plots of the northwest corner of the site. There is no adopted parking standard for Sangs. The highways officer has no objection to this level of parking which is an increase of seven spaces over the previous application on the site. All dwellings will be provided with at least one active EV charging space and five dual charger EV charging points will be provided in public areas of the site. The site will change in character from a greenfield land to a residential development, which will result in a change of its landscape character. However, the allocation of the site for residential development in the local plan indicates acceptance that development could be accommodated in principle. The proposed development protects the setting of settlements through the retention of strategic landscape buffer, through retained woodland and the sang, and provides landscaped areas and open space throughout the site. The areas of the site identified as sensitive in ecological terms, predominantly heathland, will be included in the safeguarded land around the sang. 
The policy compliant level of 35% of affordable housing on the site will be secured by means of a section 106 agreement. There is also a condition because um, seeking an additional up to 15% of affordable housing to be secured through Homes England grant funding. That would exceed the policy requirement on 35% on the site. And the proposed mix includes a larger number of social and affordable rented homes for families. In conclusion, the site has been allocated in the local plan as suitable for residential development for up to 230 units. Paragraph 11 of the MPPF advises that development proposals, proposals that comply with an up-to-date development plan should be approved without delay. The recent appeal decision for 226 units on the site is also a material consideration and the inspector found that on all grounds other than parking, the proposal was acceptable. Parking has now been provided to meet car parking standards. Uh, the recommendation for this is set out on the, in the main report and the supplementary report. Um, I will read it out because there is a change to some of the 106 requirements and picking up some typo, typing errors. That following the completion of planning obligations under section 106 of the Town and Country Planning Act relating to measures to avoid and mitigate the impact of residential development upon the Thames Basin Heath SPA to include a sum for the future management and maintenance, requirement to enter into section 278 agreement for the construction of the access and off-site in-kind works to pedestrian cycleways, a travel plan, contributions towards community facilities, off-site open space of public value contributions, a SUDS monitoring fee, affordable housing, secure biodiversity net gain in line with submitted plans for 30 years, biodiversity net gain monitoring sum, 30-year development landscape management plan to ensure delivery of the biodiversity net gain, a woodland management plan to cover woodland outside the SANG within the red line boundary, enter into section 38 and 278 agreements to secure necessary highway works, that the assistant director planning be recommended to approve the application subject to the following conditions as amended, added to or deleted as the assistant director considers necessary. There's one update on the conditions from the supplementary in the sense of um, condition seven on affordable housing. Um, rather than the condition in the supplementary report, we propose reverting to the condition within the main report, which was condition seven. So the wording is set out there in the main report for affordable housing. There we go. If I can get my presentation to work better to skim through some elevations. These are the elevations of the apartments as proposed. Also of some of the detached houses. I will try to zoom in. Some of the streetscapes to show the properties with uh, some on some tree planting or in the streets. And some photos of these are a typical section of some of the plantation woodland on the site, which obviously members will have seen as we glimpsed in looking at the site on Saturday. Also some of the up, shot taken from the Downshire, the, the car park across the site, looking into it from in South Road. So some pictures of the heathland next to the uh, sand, one of the protected areas. And again, some views into the site showing the underlying, t there's quite a bit of rhododendron and some plantation planting beyond that. And again, and it comes up, another shot into the site from South Road. And we do have, if it works, one of our highways officers yesterday very kindly shot some photos from the proposed access point onto South Road to show the vicinity of the and shot some South Road across to the car park opposite just to show the, the visibility that could be achieved onto South Road and the extent of any trees within that area.
Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. Um, before we go to questions for the officer, I believe we hear from our two speakers. So may I have Mr. Andy Holly, please, to the podium. As you know, you, you have three minutes to say what you would like to say. Um, and you'll get 20 second warning, um, but you can carry on speaking until the three minutes is up and it starts beeping, then I have a fight with the thing to make it switch okay. off. <laughs> okay. and, and yes, and then, thank you for that prompt. Uh, after that, please stay there for a minute because members are allowed to ask questions of clarification of fact. Okay. That's all. Okay. So, let's get... Hang on. Ready, steady? Yep. Start. Thank uh, you. Madam Chairman, councillors, I'm speaking on behalf of the Crowthorne Village Action Group. Uh, this site sits in the gap between Bracknell and Crowthorne, nominally part of Great Hollands. It has no road connection to Great Hollands. The only road leads to Crowthorne. There'll be residents of Bracknell but closer to the facilities in Crowthorne, a dual existence. It's difficult to see how that isn't blurring the lines, contrary to section 9.129 of the local plan. Quote, the distinctive setting and character of individual settlements will be protected and retained. This 32 hectare site is currently woodland, a mixture of broadleaf and conifer, and a lot of that will be lost. 5.5 hectare will be kept as a sang, but 11 hectare of woodland will be lost, and 0.5 hectare of new planning, which hardly fits in with the Bracknell Town neighbourhood plan, which says that dozens of new saplings should be planted for every tree lost. Just to put that in perspective, imagine a football pitch covered in trees of various types. Now imagine 10 football pitches. That is what you are being asked to vote for this evening. If it's approved, it will be the biggest loss of woodland in Bracknell for a decade. And it's unnecessary. Much is made of its inclusion in the local, recently adopted local plan. However, that plan identifies far more sites than are actually required, an over-provision of 752 homes. So it could forego these 320 homes and still over-deliver. It is good that it includes an element of affordable housing, but it's the wrong location. It's isolated, it's not close to any facilities, and it's very dependent on car use. The previous application was refused for six reasons. By the time it got to the inspector, four of those reasons had been conceded by the planning officer and were not inspected by the external inspector. Bracknell Town Council has recommended that this be remo removed. Sorry, refused. Crowthorne Parish Council has been refused. The decision now rests with you. At the council meeting on Tuesday, there were many fine words seconds. about commitment to the environment and climate change. Now I ask you to stand up to those fine words and to stop this loss of woodland and refuse this application. Thank you. Thank you very much. I will take any questions. Uh, Councillor Mackenzie Boyle, please. Thank you very much. I'm not sure that I tested this earlier. Um, Mr. Tommy, thank you very much. Very, very passionate, I have to say. Um, you said we were over, develop, over delivering on housing. Evidence, please. Um, the evidence is in the local plan. They start. It, it's a very methodical thing. They start off with a standard method, and they calculate we in Bracknell need 460 homes per year to meet the forecast need. They then apply an uplift because. Homes are expensive in this area, and the way it works is you provide an uplift to provide more than are needed to try and keep prices down. So that gives us 610 homes a year. 
You then multiply that by the number of years, and you find out we need to be building 10,000 and something new homes. But then the local plan identifies the homes already committed. That's things like TRL, where they've got planning permission for 1,000, but they haven't built them all yet, and other sites that are not delivered. 9,000 houses are sitting waiting to be delivered. The shortfall is only 1,300. The plan identifies sites for over two, just over 2,000, 2,080. So there's a 760, is it 752 over provision. We can forego this one and we can still meet the forecast need, even allowing for that over provision for the uplift. Thank you. Any other questions for Mr. Holly, please? None? Thank you. Mr. In case, thank you for thank your time you. and attention. Thank you. Now, the applicant, Mr. Terry Gamble, would you like to come and stand? Yeah. Hi. Good evening. Um, Again, you have three minutes, and I'll, I'll tell you when you've got 20 seconds left, but you can carry on until the three minutes. Okay, thank Thanks. you. Would you... Oh, hang on. I just need to start it. Okay. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to speak tonight. Uh, you will be aware that the previous scheme was dismissed at appeal in 2023, but only in parking and highway grounds. Over the last nine months, we have worked closely with your officers on revisions to address your previous concerns and those of the inspector. There are now no outstanding objections from statutory consultees or your officers on the revised proposals. Importantly, the scheme will deliver at least 35% affordable housing in line with your new policy. There is some opposition to the application from a number of local residents, and we fully appreciate that new development can give rise to concerns. In many cases, these concerns are not application specific because the opposition concerns an allocated site in your local plan. The plan is based on an extensive consultation process where these issues were considered in full. Further, last year, an independent inspector found the previous scheme to be acceptable in all respects, apart from the level of parking provision, which is now addressed. I would like to comment on some aspects of the scheme. The site comprises an allocated housing site in your new local plan. The allocation of the site has been brought through the examination process and has been independently scrutinized and found to be in a suitable and sustainable location for new homes. The application provides 226 homes, including a large number of family homes for rent, the council's priority need as agreed by the council's housing officers. Secondly, the proposed development will provide a substantial amount of on-site affordable housing. As a minimum, the scheme will deliver 35% affordable housing secured by legal agreement. This comprises a policy compli compliant provision of affordable housing in accordance with the new local plan and the site allocation. Notwithstanding that, talks with Homes England regarding grant funding have been positive, and should the funding come forward, the proposed scheme would deliver up to 50% affordable housing, which would be well in excess of the local plan. The proposals fully address the inspector's only objections to the previous scheme. The development also delivers almost 24 hectares of land for biodiversity and open space, so will not have an adverse impact on the Thames Basin Heaths. This is a high quality scheme that accords with the Council's policies, standards and requirements in design, space standards, layout, parking, open space and housing mix. In conclusion, the scheme accords with the local plan as a whole and we commend the scheme to you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, does anyone have questions? Councillor Barnard. Thank you very much. Thank you for your presentation. Um, the current scheme, you know, on, on a site that's allocated, requires the removal of 10 hectares of trees. Mm. Um, can you just shed some sight on why more thought was not given to retaining a greater amount of tree coverage as part of the development of the site? Because 
you know, it is mixed. And if you look elsewhere in Bracknell, if you want to relate it across, there are significant estates with significant numbers of pine trees retained. So I'm mm. just interested in the thought process that led you to the need to remove 10 hectares of trees. Sorry, wrong way. Um, I think the, uh, the original allocation in the local plan always stated it would be up to 226 to 230 units, which would require the removal of that volume of trees, but we have kept the buffer in to Nine Mile Ride, which is quite substantial and protects the view from Nine Mile Ride into the site. Anyone else, please? Visiting councillors, no? No? Okay. Thank you very much. Mr. Okay, thank you very much. Thanks. Okay, moving on. Questions for our officer, please. Councillor Barnard. Well, since I finished on trees, I'd like to start on trees. Um, if we could look at the uh, site plan in particular with South Road. Um, on the site visit, um, we, 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 we walked along that and... My starting point is I think this picture is disingenuous. Could the officer please share and explore with us exactly the need for tree removal around the secondary access? Because if it's any shape or form like that, which has just happened up at the Skylarks, um, that little sort of break in the woodland doesn't seem to sort of um, match what I'd expect to happen, and that will have a profound impact on South Hill Park, on South Road. So just really understanding how much will be lost on that um, exit. I think you were expecting that question. <laughs> <so>. <laughs> yes. Thank you. And we, we did discuss on the site visit the extent of tree loss along South Road, which we manoeuvre the plan very slowly into place. Yes. <laughs> it's going up and down everywhere. We did discuss on the extent of the tree loss that would be required at the access point here. Um, obviously, trees will be need to be required to create the access and also to create the visibility displays. And some work was done in the traffic assessment to look at that. Uh, trees, smaller trees and larger trees would have a, a different requirement to be lost, but the visibility displays have been shown. And if you want to tell me, we also have another display. We can find. We also had a plan there that showed the extent of it, which doesn't show the numbers of plans. It just showed that the tree loss would be along South Road. I think there's concerns on the on the day that um, trees would be required to be lost within the buffer. So I'm just trying to. So my res computer is responding extremely slowly and flicking back between uh, plans. So we have shown the extent of it. So trees would be lost, as marked there, that um, trees would be lost on either side of that access point. But the further the visibility displays would not require further removal because some of the trees are actually quite narrow trunks. And obviously the visibility is different. If, if we had very mature trees, you would have to lose them. But the spacing of the trees on South Road is such that our highways officer is content, as were the tree officers, that the access could be created, could be created with some loss of trees of the visibility displays, but not extensive loss. And there was concern that the buffer behind that, between the site boundary and South Road, would have to be removed. Um, trees outside the site along South Road are owned by Bracknell Forest, so the applicant would have no rights of removal of the trees, and in fact there should be no need to remove them, because other than the creation of the access and visibility displays, there'd be no need to remove further trees along South Road. So the buffer, such as it is, should be retained. Um, Councillor Smith. Thank you, Chair. Um, uh, Mr. Holly uh, drew attention to a point in relation to compliance with the Bracknell Town Neighbourhood Plan. Uh, I believe it's specifically policy EV4, uh, which uh, discusses protection of trees. Uh, I was just wondering if, the, if we could ask the officer to speak to the compliance of the application with that policy and the 
material weight that that would have in our consideration, please. Yes, of course. Thank you. Um, obviously, that policy and our own policies, we do seek to retain trees as far as possible, but it has been acknowledged and recognised that the only means of creating the housing allocation site here would be through the removal of the woodlands, and part of the assessment of that was to look at the baseland trees um, and really balance the, the loss of woodland, which wasn't seen as being specific quality, but contributed to a wider area, against the needs of the housing. And that balance was made at the time of the local plan assessment and allocation and all the stages of that allocation. So it, it is unfortunately inevitable on this site that trees have to be lost to create these houses. The two can't coexist. And it's been acknowledged that that can take place and maintenance of the landscape character by retaining the buffer along Nine Mile Ride. Thank you. Supplementary. Thank you, Chair. So just to ensure I'm understanding properly, uh, I believe the implication was, and I hope the officer could just confirm, that the material weight of the inclusion of this site in the local plan uh, on, on planning balance in this case would outweigh the policies with regards to tree retention? In that sense, yes, in the sense that the loss of trees was part of the assessment of the allocation of this site, and as part of that it was acknowledged that there would be tree loss to the extent that we have here. The tree loss is no greater here than was considered in the assessment of the site and its suitability in the local plan process or in the last planning application. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, Councillor Mackenzie Boyle, please. Then Councillor Penfold. Thank you, Chair. Um, we're talking about um, impact of future housing. Um, can we also think about across the road to our very near neighbour, Woking and Borough? Um, they've got on the strategic development location, which is part of their local plan, South Woking and Major Development is an extension of Wokingham Town, Montague Park, and south of the railway between the boundary with Bracknell Forest. Now, that's just across the road. So can I ask, please, have we actually thought about the cum cumulative impact of traffic from both Wokingham Borough, their local plan, and that of Bracknell Forest's adopted new plan? And will that see the erosion of designated settlements and emphasise and encourage urban sprawl, in your view? Through you, Chair, I'll take the first bit if that's okay, as that's more in my jurisdiction. I think the question about traffic and impact, yes, the local plan process came along, alongside that was extensive modelling using uh, the Battle Forest traffic model, which paid regard to our neighbours in Wokingham and background growth associated with either their own uh, planned developments uh, and any other further growth from around their boroughs that would lead to traffic on our network. So in that regard, yes, it was considered along with our own commitments that we were proposing in the local plan. Thank you very much. Can I just a supplementary? Um, what do we do about these car parks that we will have rather than thoroughfares? I don't know if I can answer that question, Chair. I think it's referring to a, <laughs> to a subjective view on our <laughs> traffic network. Um, Councillor Penfold. I'll carry on with the uh, traffic question. I can see the traffic getting out onto Nine Mile Ride with the roundabouts, but I have concerns from getting out of South Road onto Nine Mile Ride without some improvement on that junction. Through you, Chair, through the modelling that's been carried out, there is a very limited number of houses, about 67, that are coming out onto South Road. And obviously at the peak operational times of the background network, so not on long nine mile ride, are when uh, that will be its busiest, uh, the peak, peak hours, the work has been undertaken to show the impact those additional houses will have on that junction. And it doesn't lead to uh, such a significant issue that will cause operational problems. There are alterations, slight alterations proposed along nine mile ride in that area, not related to this development, but related as part of the TRL development that we've mentioned tonight. Uh, the larger development of Buckler, Buckler Park to the, to the south, which provides some alterations around that junction that will also help with the thr throughput of traffic uh, and pedestrian connections across the road in that location. I can talk a bit more about length if you wish me to on that, but 
uh, we're not concerned about the impact at that specific junction. Thank you. Um, I'm not terribly convinced, but um, you're the expert. Um, can I go back to my question on trees, as I was going to write that? It was really, you've said the range of trees will compensate for the lack of trees. How does this affect the carbon reduction efforts? Thank you, Chair. Um, yes, the loss of trees was obviously part of the assessment, and it's also a part of the biodiversity net gain calculations that, um, that the starting point for the base of that is the trees as they are now. The reduction in number of trees and the increased variety of trees um, have formed part of the calculation that shows there would be a biodiversity net gain of in excess of the 10% that we would generally require on the site. So in the sense of the variety, the broadleaf trees, etc., even though smaller in number, would enhance biodiversity. Um, that's, that was part of the assessment, again, of the local plan, and our biodiversity officer is satisfied that that would be the case. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Oh, can, can I? Is that it? Councillor Barnard? Yep. So um, my first question on the biodiversity. So I'm, I'm trying to get my head around this. So we remove 10 hectares of mature trees, um, predominantly pine trees, but they are mature trees and presumably have a significant carbon capture and we do know that there are a lot of native woodland species that actually do inhabit that because it okay it does have rhododendron but it does have deciduous understory and we replace it with about half a hectare of young trees possibly hedgerows with whips and small things at what point after the completion of the development would we expect that replacement planting to appropriately mitigate the loss of 10 hectares of trees because you know, it's all, it's all very well to say 10% net gain, but are we waiting 30, 40, 50 years for 10% net gain? Because I find it hard to believe that half a hectare of replanting will achieve that, you know, when they finish building 230 on houses. So I'm, I'm somewhat struggling with this. I know we'll need to do some more work on it, but I, I really genuinely are struggling to understand how this will happen. So I'm just interested how that modelling worked, really. I think that's the question. Sorry, I think that's the question. How, how did we get to that perspective? Please. Thank you for you, Chair. Um, yes, that is part of the proposal. Um, biodiversity net gain, when it's provided on site, which it will be here, will e is expected to be in place on completion of the development. Um, and the, the net gain plans and the management of the monitoring will be secured through the Section 106 agreement. Um, and my understanding, and I'm sure there are other colleagues and our colleague online who may be able to correct me, is that the variety that could be introduced, because the trees can be introduced not just as young trees but as semi-mature, and the opportunity for hedgerow and other understory, because as you said on site there's a, a lot of rhododendron, which is not necessarily native, there can be replacements to that, and larger trees can be planted and the buffer supplemented. That as part of the work that's been carried out for the BNG, diversity, our biodiversity officers were satisfied that that increase could be achieved on the completion of the development, which would include the completion of the biodiversity net gain measures as well. Thank you. Uh, yes. Thank you. So I'd like to go back to the parking. So, yeah, so we, we, um, we, we visited the site on a Saturday morning, um, and I think it was, from what I read, listen, talking to locals there, it was quite a typical Saturday morning with a lot going on around the, um, you know, yeah. around the rec ground and things like that. Um, the car park was full, people were parking right up and down South Road and even parking on the access roads to um, the, you know, the new Taylor Wimpy development. Now, if that's a Saturday outside peak hours and there were already issues with cars overtaking each other, I'm struggling to understand how that would look on a working week morning where you might have people coming to and from the crematorium and other facilities on that as well as using the recreation ground. So um, is it assumed that there would be car park, you know, has the modelling assumed that there would actually be car parking down both sides of the road, which was kind of more or less what was starting to happen by the time we left, because that's going to impact on the traffic flows. I'm just saying, because, you know, we were there on a Saturday, which was not a, a peak time, and it seemed hugely congested, and that was before you take out a significant section of the kerb, you know, the road heading up towards Nine Mile Ride for, you know, the visibility displays and the access to the site from there. So it, it was just understanding how that st stood up. I'm sorry, that's a long question, but it's... 
It's a fairly complex issue that's been puzzling me since we looked at the site, I think, is the... Uh, through you, Chair, I think your question is, have we considered the parking implications that may occur from other use... Other, other uses around the site. We are aware that perking occurs on occasion for certain specific operations that happen out there. Um, clearly, I think you probably visited when there might be park runs and certain things that operate on the uh, playing pitches near the pavilion at Great Hollands. Um, I've, uh, my observations of the site are that parking doesn't normally extend that far down South Road. It does extend around the pavilion up towards the crematorium. Um, but in terms of its operation on that part of South Road and the implications around the, the junction itself, the new proposed junction that you've seen on the plans. Uh, we, we don't foresee that being an issue. However, as the council, we do have powers, if necessary, to go in and uh, make the appropriate uh, tra well, then traffic regulation orders, if necessary. The road is controlled by the council, so obviously we go through a separate statute and process for that. But if there are safety implications that are foreseen and created along uh, certain areas near junctions that can be investigated and looked at and, but it's through a separate process to the to the planning consideration so um, that's our view that's my view on on, on that point um, obviously the other uses that operate along the road obviously have their own parking you mentioned the crematorium it can be busy on occasion with the crematorium we know that that again is slightly further not a lot but slightly further up the road um, but the same comment would apply in terms of if there were a safety implication Generally, at the busiest time from that site, peak hours on a weekday, um, my observations are that there, there is some parking that does occur there, but again, that's generally much further up um, when the sports pitches are being used. Councillor Mackenzie Boyle, and then... Thank, thank, thank you, Chair, through you, obviously. Um, the Sang. Now, on Buckler's Park, we've got insufficient car parking. Have we got sufficient car parking here? Through you, Chair, I think that was another one for me. Um, yes, you, I think the, you heard from the officer that the car parking of the Sang was previously discussed at the last appeal. It's been increased from 14 spaces to 21. Uh, and work has been done in relation to consideration of the demands on the Sang. Obviously, Buckler's Park Sang is bigger than this Sang. Uh, I'm not a Sang expert, I just know that the size is it's smaller. Um, and observations have been undertaken at other locations as part of the proposal put in front of us in terms of um, actual physical survey work of other Sangs in and around our borough and Wokingham borough. Uh, and we're comfortable that the amount of space is provided there and the facilities, how it's laid out within the site to allow vehicles to safely turn around, etc., is is adequate in our view. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, supplementary, please. Okay. Talking of the SANG, um, because of the housing mix, and that's detailed in paragraph 5.2 5 in the officer's report, assuming each property has one double bedroom and all the rest are single, that suggests something like 840 beds, the table 9.123 quotes even higher numbers of occupancy. So are, is the SANG big enough, ostensibly, to support the residents that could possibly be living in that area. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Actually, the, the SANG does exceed the requirements for the housing development. So the SANG officer felt that um, it, it met the requirements and actually exceeded them. Um, the additional safeguard of land is not included in that because we're not encouraging public access to the heathlands, but the SANG itself um, is appropriate. And of course, it will also link in time to the TRL SANG and Great Hollands to provide a larger walking area for residents. Thank you. Councillor Hayes. Well, I'll carry on from the parking part, and I'm sure Mr. Turner will want to talk to it. Um, the, the first application, as you know, was refused on parking. Yes. And now they're saying this is the des new designs, which I've been trying to get looking at with regards to the bedrooms and all the rest of it, it's going to be sufficient. My favorite word, as you know, is waste. <laughs> with regards to the modeling of the properties to store these bins we have and the rest of it, and the junction along, especially South Hill, the movement of the trucks, 
the design element that is put before us. Do you think that the design element for parking in the streets is going to be adequate? Because there will be on-street parking, from what I'm looking at with the numbers, that you can accommodate if the parking gets to such that I think will be on this side, the waste movement and the, the storage of the bins on all properties in some design element, because I, I am very concerned with the design element with that. Through, through you, Chair, I may ask my colleague, the planning officer, to comment on the bin storage and the, and the provision that's on plot, because I think you're asking a design point there. In relation to car parking, and I think you referred to on-street car parking, this was a subject of quite a debate at the planning appeal on the last subject in relation to visitor parking, distribution of parking, and how on-street parking could safely be accommodated, along with some of the dedicated parking that is shown on the plans in lay-by form along the main spine road in particular into the site. Um, as I said, that was subject to some debate and the inspector took the view that on-street parking could be adequately provided in safe locations. Uh, I am, the road itself is wide enough with on-street parking to allow uh, a refuse vehicle to pass along it. There are suitable turning heads and turning spaces to turn within that road. So in that regard, I don't believe there'll be an issue for the refuse serving any access in, into the site. I'll let my com colleague comment on the design bins. Yes, thank you. Um, all properties of, will be provided with um, space for refuse storage. Most of the properties are houses and they will have bin store capacity. Our waste manager was satisfied with the requirements. Um, and I believe that the roads are designed to allow for refuse vehicles to, to access those um, properties. The apartments will also be provided with bin storage to serve them. They're in sort of six relatively small blocks of apartments. And, and the refuse storage facilities, I believe, are, are acceptable. And no highways objections have been raised to you know, the need for refuse storage sites and pickup points. Thank you. So it's conditioned such that um, conversions of garages and such like that, as we always have, where most people do put their parking, because of the parking numbers, we are conditioning that sort of thing eventually with it. We do if, um, have our normal retention of garages condition, yes. Thank you. Um, do you want to... Council, do you want to go first? Councillor Collins, please. Thank you, Chair. Um, we talked about affordable housing and 50% being commendable, but 15% of that is going to be funded by a Homes England grant. What happens if we don't secure that? What happens to that 15%? Thank you. Through you, Chair. Uh, yes, um, the affordable housing above the 35% rate will be secured through Homes England grant. Um, the grant funding is not available for affordable housing that is required to be provided, which is the 35%. So to encourage additional affordable housing up to 50%, the applicants have said, that grant, that grant funding would be available for that. That process... I believe is dependent on planning permission being granted so obviously at that's at, at the moment I can't comment on if that funding will or will not be approved but we do have in addition to the 106 that requires an affordable housing um, sort of survey to be agreed with us we do have a condition that the additional affordable housing um, has to be secured so as members will see, the condition there um, does cover the need for the additional housing and the process to secure that. And obviously, if it wasn't secured, then that would have to be reviewed in the sense of the condition couldn't be met under 106, and that would be directly in conflict with the consent. If there are indications that that was not going to be secured, then the 106 agreement may not be completed and the permission not issued, so it would be very dependent on that. So I believe it's not unusual that affordable housing above a policy level has to be separately conditioned because 
how Homes England funding cannot be achieved on the 35%, and there is an intent by the applicant homes, to secure additional funding for that affordable housing. Yeah, I'm, I'm we have, sorry. Yes, please do. Chair, through you, I just wanted to expand on um, the officers. Um, response, which is all correct, but I wanted to reassure members that um, the affordable housing of 50% is controlled and enforced through the Section 106 agreement and Condition 7, I think it is, on the main report, um, which means, and it's a um, condition which means they cannot commence the development unless they can provide that 50% affordable housing, 35% 35, 35 of it controlled through the Section 106, and the 15% controlled through the condition. And the condition is a pre-commencement condition, which means they cannot commence the development without um, ensuring that that 50% can be provided. And that, that's the reason why that condition's on there, so that uh, we can enforce that level of provision. Thank you. Well, we know what a dire need we have for family homes afford that are affordable and social rent in Bracknell. Um, Councillor Smith, please. Thank you, Chair. Um, whilst we're on the topic of that planning condition, uh, I note that condition uh, lists uh, four number adaptable units within that 15%. Uh, I couldn't find anywhere else in the report any reference to the number of adaptable units, and I'm aware there is a policy on this in the new plan. I was just wondering if the officer could confirm for us the total portion of the full number of units that will be adaptable homes. Thank you, Chair. Uh, the total of units will be secured through the 106, through the discussions, and it will be secured through the discussions on the affordable housing, in the sense of our housing officer will be seeking um, a proportion he's looking at, at five percent to be full wheelchair mobility standards but i'll see that's the m43 level which we have previously discussed is the maximum level there are also other mobility standards of housing i understand so those discussions will take place as part of the discussions on the the housing mix on the affordable housing Councillor smith thank you chair so sorry, I, I just trying to understand why that is to be addressed rather than hasn't been addressed in the the design and submission so far as it is a plan policy now um chair through you um just just explain um in terms of how the scheme that is uh, to be provided is enforced and um, agreed. Um, usually there is a obligation in the Section 106 agreement for a scheme um, providing all of the elements that are listed there uh, to be submitted to the council and to be approved. And it's that during that scheme where the individual elements are um, sort of identified as in, t in terms of where, where they will be going and how they um, will be provided. So um, what we do, what, what the housing enabling officer looks at what our requirements are um, when that scheme comes through, what sort of housing we need, what our priority need is, um, and then agrees that scheme on that basis. So it's usually an obligation in the Section 106, which deals, deals with the details of the provision of the affordable housing, whereas the um, Planning Commission talks more about our policy compliance in terms of percentage. I hope that clarifies it. I think I'm moving towards clarification. <laughs> um, I, I, I just know quite funny. That, that, so there, there's a percentage figure in the new plan in policy LP38, which says for an, on developments of 10 or more new build dwellings, at least 5% need to meet uh, the M43 standard. Uh, and I, I'm just not quite satisfied that I've had confirmation that what's in front of us currently is 5% at that standard. Uh, and, and why that wouldn't be confirmed now before we give permission rather than as part of an agreement afterwards. Um, I'm, I'm not clear whether that is before us at the moment. Do we have the affordable housing scheme set out 
the individual no it, it, it the, i think the condition and the obligations to require a scheme to be submitted which will make sure that is that provision is um, provided for but that's that scheme hasn't been submitted we don't have the details um, so we can only set out the boundaries in terms of what needs to be provided until that actual scheme is submitted we won't know where it where it's going to go and exact the exact provision of it depending on what our needs are at that time sorry Can chair to yeah. continue Carry on, on. Uh, the, but the policy is is in the new plan is not specifically for affordable housing it is a percentage of all new build dwellings so i i appreciate there are questions around agreement on the affordable housing to be addressed as part of the 106 but I'm, I'm still not sure I'm understanding why we don't have confirmation now that across the scheme as a whole the developer is proposing to meet that 5% figure uh, or, or are they and that's just not been included in the report uh, that, and, and that, I would like clarification on that. Is, is it something that will come back to committee when, when the um, arrangement is made? Generally, the 106 arrangements for the mix of housing are done at officer level between solicitors on both sides. So um, not necessarily as, as advised there by our high end, they? The mix of them will depend on the need at that time. So it, we could fix a percentage now, but at the time of coming forward and completing the 106, um, the housing officer who has knowledge of the needs in the area may feel that more is required or less, and that will be part of the negotiations on 106, that the housing needs should meet the needs of the population at that time. Um, but in relation to non-affordable housing, no, we, there is no restrictions or requirements on mobility housing for the other units. The discussions have been through the affordable housing. I find that quite curious <laughs> um, would you like to comment yeah i mean if, if it helps i mean obviously this application has been with us some time chairman chair sorry uh, and uh, the, the, the fact of the matter is that this has been presented in the officer report there is a clear balance to be made as there is in many applications uh, and we are there, there are some areas that it does not comply fully with the policy and one of those is the for example the self-build requirement but officers have taken the view that in relation to that uh, the self-build and these accessible standards the benefits of the additional affordable housing outweigh any conflict with the re very recently adopted policies and that is set out, I think, at Para 92A to be at the report. Councillor Smith, do you have? Problems? Thank you. Sorry, it would be my last point today. I, I just want to be very clear. Then, so, are we being told that the what is proposed currently does not comply with policy LP 38 of the new plan? So, we, we, we do it, we do have a situation here that the application is not directly compliant with that policy. In terms of what, sorry, through you, Chair, again. Um, in, in terms of what uh, we know we are going to secure, we can't say that it's definitely compliant. As has been, I think, um, explained, we don't know yet exactly how much um, of the accessible type of housing we will secure because that negotiation hasn't happened. So whether that exceeds the 5% within the affordable and therefore meets the overall requirement or come somewhere between, we don't know. But as I said, there is a balance to be struck between the, the li limit, very limited areas within which this current proposal doesn't meet all the new policy requirements, again, bearing in mind it was submitted some time ago, uh, and the clear benefits of exceeding the policy requirements in particular areas, notably the affordable housing, um, the same provision, etc. Okay, thank you. Um, where were we? Um, Sheila, please. Yep. Uh, Councillor Collings. 
thank you. I may be returning to Sang again, sorry. Um, LP6 identified a requirement for the um, adjacent communities to be connected. But in looking at the plans in detail, I couldn't see any linking footways between this proposed development and the Taylor Wimpy site. Could you assure me that they are being provided? Please. Thank you, to you, Chair. Yes, we, we do have a plan here that shows some of the connection links um, between the Sangs and the Taylor Wimpy site and this scheme. So the, the footpaths there do show the links through from the Taylor Wimpy site across to Great Hollands. And from here, I believe our our SANG officer has been in discussions as part of the SANG management plan to ensure there's a, a gate at this point here for access out in this part here, which doesn't show up obviously on the screen very well. So a link has been provided there. And then there are links across the road to Butler's Park, SANG and to Great Hollands. So the pedestrian connectivity has been achieved through the plan when those links are made in the future, when the SANG is in place. Thank you. Um, Councillor Barnard? So, what, what I'm kind of struggling with is, here we have a new local plan and a range of policies, and as we said earlier, we had a briefing on this on Monday. In essence, for, for a layperson looking at this, we're saying that even with the ink barely dry on the local plan, that we have an application which isn't entirely consistent with all the policies we've just chosen to adopt. But um, a professional view is that, in the view of officers in particular, that there are more benefits in areas where it isn't fully compliant than there are when making it compliant with the plan that is barely, as I say, literally fresh on the page. So have I, have I got, you know, the broad principles <coughs> right in that? Because I think that's an important thing for um, all present to recognise. Thank you. Yes, Thank please. you, Chair, through you. Um, I think as the report sets out, there is a, a planning balance to be made. And in terms of the um, local plan policy, LP6, um, the site meets the requirements in the area of land to be development, developed, the landscape buffer, the SANG, and the 35% affordable housing. But in addition to that, there is an offer of additional affordable housing, which the balance made by officers is that not achieving the self-build plots and not achieving the elderly housing, although we're still in discussions on the proportion of mobility um, access units, weighed against the affordable housing that the proposal was acceptable. So a scheme could have come forward with the self-build and the elderly person's housing, although it, that's not what's in front of us, and with 35% affordable housing, which would have met all requirements. This scheme will exceed with housing grant support, affordable housing, and exceeds the requirement for SANG capacity. So in that terms of balance, it's felt that that is a beneficial impact of the proposal. Thank you. Councillor Mackenzie Boyle. Thank you, Chair. Um, through you, um, what provision has been made for the site access during construction period? Um, obviously, it's going to be on South Road. Um, which will be possibly in conflict with uh, the hourly procession of the uh, funeral cortege. What have we done about that? Through you, Chair. Yeah. Um, in terms of construction access, there are conditions on the suggested on the officer's report, but the actual construction and phasing of the development is to be agreed. Now, clearly, obviously, there isn't access on Nine Mile Ride to the site at present. Um, and so, that, as I said, that is, that is the staging and phasing of the development is to be agreed in terms of how the implementation of the various works. It may include some access via South Road uh, for initial works, but clearly for full build-out, our anticipation is that nine, the Nine Mile Ride roundabout will be in place to take the traffic into the site. Uh, in terms, I think you made reference to operations that might happen down South Road, such as the funerals in relation to operations and how will that be managed. Clearly our consideration of how those phases and how at the beginning and implementation of the site build out to facilitate the access works on Nine Mile Ride will be a consideration of that. 
and limiting traffic along South Road and the size of vehicles associated with that due to the nature of South Road will be a consideration as part, a part of that but dealt with through the suggested condition um, to be submitted if Thank this you. is approved. Just the supplementary chair yeah, please. please. Thank you. Um, talking about the South Road, um, what is the problem with access from West Road? Through your chair? Yep. Well, access isn't proposed from West Road. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, West Road itself is uh, narrower. Uh, it doesn't have provisions of footways along it. And I think the reason I'm looking at my colleague, uh, because of the Heathland, there is obviously Sang and Heathland to the north. And trying to create access through the site in that direction would bring in a much longer access road and could well have biodiversity and Sang implications. But I, I don't want to comment on this. I'll let my colleague make that. Cool. That's, again, uh, it was just you know a moment. Um, so the preferred access comes off the Nine Mile Road, which is a road heavily used with congestion and tailbacks into Bracknell. However, we can't disregard, I think, the alternative use of West Road leading from the old Wokingham Road, which is again heavily used from Jennets Park, um, the A329M, and for the M4 peak times. So. Can you, like I can't actually, see the traffic winding its way round, bypassing West Road, round to the roundabout, access to my road, onto South Road? Traffic's like water. It's going to find the easiest access. It's going to come down West Road, surely. Heathland bumps whatever. It's going to do it. Don't you agree? I understand the point you went through, you Chair. I understand the point you're making. Access and the predominant of the access for the majority of these, these dwellings, I think we said about 67, are coming off South Road. The remainder of the 226 are coming off the roundabout onto Nine Mile Ride. Um, if you're wishing to head out towards Old Wokingham Road, my view is that I think they will use those roundabouts, that wider road. I've observed traffic. Obviously, I'm aware of the improvements we've made uh, and alterations we've made to Nine Mile Ride or Wokingham Road as part of the TRL. Um, obviously, we've improved the Golden Retriever. That corridor is the Cold Retriever Junction. That corridor is, in my view, likely to be much more used. That's not to say some traffic will not try to use South Road and West Road, but my, my view is that the, the majority of traffic will utilise Nine Mile Ride due to the nature of the road and the movement of vehicles. That, as I said, I mentioned West Road has got narrowings along it. Um, if you pass other traffic, it's sometimes difficult to pass, so it's, it's not necessarily the most uh, easiest road to get out of but as I said the majority of the traffic is already facing southwards and my view is they will use nine mile ride uh, and the south road traffic we've restricted the site so that you cannot cut through the site um, and in that regard that controls traffic movements in my from my opinion um, Councillor Collins at the um, site visit on Saturday we noted the bus stops um, in close proximity to Sl South Road. However, I don't think I would particularly enjoy trying to cross nine, nine Mile Ride to reach the one on the opposite side of the road. Is there any, are there any plans in place to put a crossing in? Please. Yep. Through you, Chair. Yes, there are. I think I briefly mentioned it earlier, maybe in answer to another question. There are some improvement works that are brought about um, via the TRL development uh, as part of that, those works. Um, at present, the crossing hasn't gone in. There's a crossing to be put on the western side as you look at it in plan form. Um, you can probably see it actually on this um, plan for linking the Sangs that uh, the case officer has. You can just see um, where it says Bucklers Park Sang, um, an indication that there's dotted lines crossing what is Nine Mile Ride near the junction of South Road. Um, there is a crossing to go in that location and alterations to where the bus stops currently are, some road alterations and some traffic islands to relocate and put new sections of footway to link bus stops into a more lo appropriate location because there's currently a bus stop roughly where the crossing is likely to go um, and so the bus stops have to move. That Those works have not been implemented yet as there is no active entrance into the open space of the TRL at that point. Uh, that, that is coming forward as part of a later phase of... Um, the TRL um, that is that has now got planning consent and will be under construction. As soon as we get the opportunity that that connection will be made, we will be making sure that the TRL 
go back with the road agreements they have in place to implement the junction changes that are needed, which will provide a controlled crossing. It is a push-button crossing. It's not just an informal crossing um, to allow pedestrians to cross over and connect between South Road and Buckler's Park. Councillor Penfold, please. Um, I see little mention of the schools and the other facilities. Now, there is a school within fairly short walking distance of the school. Is it, has it got space for more children? Um, I don't want, you know, precisely. Is it aware that this is going to happen and probably alter their school and enlarge it? Um, there is a large recreation field and a hall there. Are they getting... Have, uh, having some contribution towards development for the com more local community or the extra community. Thank, Thank you, you, Chair. To you. Yep. On the last point, the um, 106 um, contributions do include contributions for community facilities to expand facilities. Um, we haven't been asked to provide education contributions in the sense of it hasn't been identified as a requirement to expand schools. So on that basis of the planning of education as part of the local plan process, the assumption is that there is capacity there. I believe the site is very close to Wooden Hill, Hill School, to East Hampstead Park Secondary School, and also to, I believe, other schools within Crowthorne. So education contributions haven't been sought for the application. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Do you want to no. no. Okay. Um, um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Councillor yes. Lodin, through you, Chair. Thank you. Uh, in page number 10, section 1.5, it says mitigate, mitigate impacts on the Thames Basin heat. So, which seems to be in, which seems to be in contradiction to section 9.54 in our local plan, uh, where we say the Thames, Thames Basin heat, SPA, and Windsor Forest and Great Park SAC are given the highest level of protection through the habitat regula regulations. So could, could, the, could the officer clarify this, please? Um, obviously, the site does provide a SANG, um, but contributions are still being sought towards the monitoring and maintenance of that and towards what we call SAM contributions towards um, education and the, the overall management of them. So the mitigation on the Thames Basin SPA is the provision of the sign in excess of the requirement and the securing of the contributions towards the maintenance and monitoring of the, the sign. Thank you. Um, is there anybody else who hasn't spoken? Have we covered? Sorry? Councillor. Oh, Councillor Mackenzie Boyle. Yeah. I have spoken, that she will. Thank you, uh, Ms. Councillor. Um, across the road, we've got the, the SANG, the Buckler's Park SANG, and the Statement of Conformity Ecological Report states in 4.7 that 11 species of bat have been recorded in that area. Section 4.14 notes that amongst the many bird species in the area, particular relevance are nightjar, Dartford warbler, and the threatened wood, woodlark. And it will be noted that the latter is known to breed in the adjacent uh, Buckler's Park SANG. How are we going to preserve that by having such a close proximity of another 230 houses? Comments, please. Thank you, through you, Chair. Um, yeah, I mean, ground nesting birds are present in the area and I'm sure will be present on this site and the SANG, and there is an area of this site that will be safeguarded even above being a SANG by being an area where the public will not be encouraged to enter, will be fenced off, and the, um, the more sensitive biodiversity areas will be secured that way. Um, obviously, tem the SPA's network and SANG network are there to protect ground nesting birds, to deter visitors to those sensitive areas and to attract them into SANGs. So that is the purpose of providing the SANGs on the site. Um, in respect of bats, um, it is referred to in the application that um, 
that roofs and facilities can be provided as part of this development and the biodiversity officer was satisfied that that obviously we would need surveys before trees are removed because that's going to be present in trees on the site and also we would look for mitigation in terms of bat nests and roofs within the site thank you um apparently we have the relevant officer on on shall we ask him to come or her to comment please i've forgotten simon gridland S simon officer gridland would you like yeah. to comment did you hear the question i did um I am I'm a, I'm a Simon Cridden, I'm the Implementation and Infrastructure uh, Manager. Um, in, res, in respect of um, uh, species of birds present on the site, um, yes, that's the case. Um, and um, if you look at the, the, the nearby Buckless Park, um, um, the actual felling of trees there has encouraged um, more um, uh, ground nesting birds and, and to, to uh, use and forage in that area. So it's been a benefit. Um, so we we see the same. Um, Margaret is absolutely right about the safeguarded era um, um, being, um, and not only for um, um, ground nesting birds, but it'd be for other species like um, slow worms and adders and, and and such like as well. So it'd be of significant benefit, and um, that would form part of the BNG um, package, which which is also in excess of uh, requirements because that area with the sang will be managed and maintained for a minimum 125 years, not 30 years. Um, the residual BNG will be for 30 years. So um, overall, there's a comprehensive package um, to ensure the mitigation of the against the, um, the negative impacts of, of, of the development on the SPA in line with our strategy, which we've been operating for 15 years now with quite a degree of success. That's very good. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Mackenzie Bond. May I ask a question, please, of that officer? Yeah. Thank you very much for that. Um, do we not? Do you not think that we're tilting what is natural into something that we are now making happen? We're taking the trees away. So you're going to have to go on the floor. It depends on what you call natural, doesn't it? Really. I mean, um, if you call um, non-native species of pine trees natural, then yes, that's your answer, isn't it? Um, otherwise. Um, um, the whole purpose of, of managing the landscape is, is for its benefit. So, for example, um, the residual sang land will be grazed. We're putting in provisions there, so that'll be managed very sensitively. So we'll introduce cattle into there, which will um, be a, a, a very beneficial for um, grassland and other other um, types of habitat. So, so yeah, so it, it, it's a well-known fact you can, you can introduce measures that positively manage a landscape for the benefit of biodiversity and environmental impacts. And that's what's going to happen here. Thank you. But the BNG does not, it's only green infrastructure. It's not wildlife. Is that right? Am I right on that? Yeah, that's the, that's, that's the creation of the, of the features and the habitat in, in the round. And, um, and that will obviously have a, uh, a benefit uh, of benefit to species, as as has proven on Buckless. If you, if you have a look at the reports of what was there before and what is there now, it's um, it's 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 it, um, emerging as a as a maturing landscape with um, many types of um, different species coming in for, for positive benefit, not just for public access, but also for for those species. And because because of the habitat, including the water bodies as well. Thank you very much. Thanks. Councillor Eberle, please. Thank you, Chair. And through you, I have a few questions. Um, one of a few of them have already been raised, so it's a bit shorter. Um, it was mentioned, obviously, in 9.120 that there would be the network of cycling and walking paths. And that referred also that actually that um, the Beaufort Park development could use better uh, Buckler Park amenities, and it was quoting Buckler Park's primary school. And we had here the question around the schools. So actually, you had been taken into the primary school, which is no longer on the plan, which is going to be a sent school. Um, so, and Wooden Hill Primary School might not have adequate uh, place as for all the children because there's lots of affordable and social housing so 
um, it would increase then traffic because it has been mentioned that would be go into Croson. So it will increase traffic during school and also during rush hours because obviously you cannot have primary school children walk from Beaufort Park into the Croson primary schools on their own. Um, how has that been in, taken actually in consideration in the overall plan? Um, I would wonder. Um. Would you like to comment? Yeah, uh, yes, through you, Chair. I mean, I, I don't have the specifics, but certainly in the preparation of the local plan, the sites were allocated um, in full uh, liaison with our education colleagues and the knowledge of the capacity of various schools. And over this planning period, we did find that um, in previous plans, we'd actually secured over-provision of school places, which is part of the reason that... Uh, as you say, we no longer need the, the school that was um, initially proposed on the Bucklers Park site, mm -hmm. uh, and there have been other instances of that. But as I say, throughout the, the, the allocation process, we were in liaison with colleagues and there were no um, were any issues in terms of school capacity were picked up through that local planning process. Okay. okay. If it's helpful, um, through you, Chair, would you agree with me that the school places planning document that we have highlights very clearly the pupil yield from a type of housing. And the one thing I don't have a problem with on this development is that that's been taken into account. And actually, the designated area would naturally, I think, direct children towards the sort of um, Wooden Hill side of things because, of course, Crowthorn School serves a different part. So um, it's, it's a document, Councillor Avelli, that you could actually pull up on your laptop, and that would show how that planning goes on. But it's a very, very clear plan and it's basically weighted on the number of children that each housing type would develop, and it's based on the decreasing birth rate that's taken place, which absolutely ties in, Max, we're agreeing tonight, ties in with the comment you make, Max, that um, the yield is going down per house, which is why we actually have overcapacity across the borough, in particular South Bracknell. Thank okay. you, Councillor. Can, can I ask a yes, uh, supplementary? Uh, oh. And also with reference to Councillor Barna, as he pointed out me again, um, I didn't mention Croson. Croson was mentioned actually by one of the officers in their reply. So I was wondering if suddenly Croson is on the radar to taking up school children and therefore the more traffic because it was part of one of the answers to a previous question of uh, another councillor. Can, can I just say that yeah. the issue is that Crowthorne CV Primary School is a popular school. It is subscribed with children from the catchment area and generally can only meet those that are very closely connected to that school. That has always been the case. It's a small school. Other schools have more capacity, more forms of entry. Yep. And that's you what don't need to plan. explain this to me. So, I Chair, didn't can raise I that. raise a point so of order? Um, point of order. Uh, we're not in debate right exactly. now. I'm just no, a little bit concerned not. about the <laughs> extent of conversations that are going on. Uh, our colleague has asked a question which I believe should be answered by the Thank officers, uh, not by other members. No, um, I, the point is well made that uh, this, the school has its own catchment area and uh, it is, has been stated from different people that there are plenty of places for the pupils that are coming from the new development. Do you have another question, please? I do have another question through you, Chair, please. And um, it was also around the air quality because in reference to the claim in 9.19 of Beaufort Park being, again, well connected to Crowson, I would also like the question on the air quality um, to which the document refers on the point 9.138. But has, we all know that the high street in, uh, into Santos Road is a key point in Crowson. However, has there been taken measurements uh, on the actually TRL roundabout since actually Buckler Park opened, if there has been an increase on that? Because, I mean, this is a huge development and any additional uh, cars and more traffic into Crowson will also create more further uh, diminishing of air quality. Has this I been think considered? we have had a straight answer to that one as well, that the traffic conditions in the area have been 
uh, properly surveyed from all these different angles, including the Butler's Park development as well. Um, would you like to comment on that? Uh, through you, Chair, I'm not the expert for air quality, so I may need to uh, ask if there's another officer with a view, but uh, clearly as part of the local plan process and the traffic modelling that's been done, and considering the, the committed developments, the our, our own plan proposals, I, I answered earlier about considering our neighbours in Woking and Borough and the plan development in that area, the traffic work that's been done for modelling the network, I believe, has been utilised for all considerations in planning, but maybe... Um, Head of planning would like to comment further on on that. Do we have someone? Uh, yes, through you, Chair. I, I would um, refer members to condition 22 in the supplementary report, which sets out the requirement um, for an air quality assessment to be submitted to demonstrate any likely changes in air quality and air pollutants as a result of the development, which covers that point, I believe. Thank you. Do you have another? One more. Um, it's more a concern because the parking on the development was raised by various councils already themselves. Uh, and I just found it peculiar. It might be perfectly legal. However, that occupants of the affordable and social housing, the two bedroom flats and houses, will have to make do with one point parking spaces in comparison to the standard two spaces. So, um, however, the main point of this development seemed to be to have a lot of housing which uh, accommodates affordable and social housing. It's 76 units and 34 of these are two bedroom flats and houses. So, are you going to be penalized because you're in a lower income if you need two parking spaces? Um, because there have already been concerns raised from other councillors here um, if there is sufficient parking on that development. Living myself on a development which was built during more restricted parking allocations, that can really cause mayhem. It sounds very good on paper, but if you also have lots of small children um, around and you have lots of parking going on on the streets, how safe are then uh, toddlers or younger children? And also how democratic and sustainable and safe in general is then the parking situation. Because on paper, it very often looks very good. Thank you. Thank you. you. I mean, Chair. Officer McKevitt. <laughs> Thank you, me. Chair. Sorry. Yes. Um, the parking for the apartments was discussed at length at the, the planning hearing. Um, and the parking standards do allow for relaxation of standards for affordable housing if evidence is submitted that the type of housing in question produces a different level of car ownership and user. The evidence was submitted that the two bedroom apartments available for social rent would be adequately served by one and a half spaces per unit and the parking for those apartments would be unallocated in the sense of we wouldn't be allocating a space for each individual unit. There would be a parking area. So people, some may have two cars, some may have no cars, some may have one car, which is, understand, relatively standard for apartment parking. It's something that we were happy to accept at that hearing because the evidence was considered to be rigorous. The highways officer is, uh, is happy with that. So that does meet the parking standards. Obviously, overflow parking on roads I think can happen on all developments I think we've all seen it it's not always related to parking being available it can also be the bad habits of property owners if you like but this scheme does meet our parking standards and it was thoroughly examined that the evidence for the apartments for social rent would accommodate 1.5 spaces thank you very much um councillor Oh, Reagan. <laughs> Dear me. Please. Uh, thank you, Chair. Yes, it's, um, that's been a very interesting discussion. So, so my question, uh, looking through the uh, biodiversity, and it's been, it has been raised al already, so would it be fair to say that um, we're trading uh, plantation uh, conifers for sang is that a good way of summarizing up those long long paragraphs that you've got under that section 
food chair. We're not necessarily replacing the plantation with sang. It's being offered up that the tree planting and the sang and the safeguarded area together will enhance biodiversity. So it's not just the sang that replaces the plantation, it's also the greater variety of tree planting and understory planting that can be achieved together with the sang and safeguarded areas offset, if, as it were, the loss of the plantation planting. Thank you. Uh, through Chair, m uh, may I ask another question? Yep. Yep. Uh, so uh, the, the speaker, Andrew uh, Holly, g gave um, some data about housing supply. So our local plan is, is literally 48 hours old. Um, my understanding is that the purpose of the plan is to you know, secure uh, housing supply against statutory requirement. Uh, could you comment on uh, whether this plan is is necessary to uh, secure our housing supply against the statutory requirement? My understanding is it is, uh, but as um, the speaker said, uh, it sort of threw some doubt on the necessity of this site. I wonder whether you just clarify that for me, please. Uh, through you, Chair. Yeah. <coughs> Sounds like one for me. Um, yeah, what the local plan does uh, is it allocates sites for housing. It also includes a windfall allowance based on uh, the best information we have about likely rates of um, unallocated sites coming forward. And it puts all that together to demonstrate that we have a supply along with obviously existing permissions, etc. Uh, and that does come to a figure that is uh, some hundreds higher than the identified need but the inspectors went through the various sites they considered all this at the local plan examination and it is now our adopted policy that the sites that we have now allocated through the council decision uh, are there to meet that supply and provide that buffer because there is obviously uncertainty in any kind of future development about um, when those sites will come forward and whether they will all necessarily come forward in the plan period. So it's not unusual to have that sort of buffer. Um, and I, I would obviously reiterate to members that this is a planning committee, not an opportunity to reopen the local plan examination. We have an adopted plan. This is an identified site. This is part of our identified housing supply. And it is going to be important in demonstrating in future years our five-year land supply to again um, once we get out of the period where we're protected to show that we can um, deliver what, we, what we, we've um, committed to. <clears throat> Sorry I was a bit long-winded. Um, I <laughs> one. Last one. Last one. Last one. Last one. Got one Max, what you've just said is just really reinforced my. This, this is an, just an observation, and with all due respect to everybody here, haven't we got this about face? Um, we're considering an application when the local plan has been adopted by council. Shouldn't we have considered this application before the, the, the plan became made? Shouldn't we? Um, just I, I, I think hypothetical is extra. I, I don't want to go there, thank you. Sorry. Um, may I ask, um, what provision have we got for cycles uh, in all the gardens and so on? And I think we should be encouraged, Dr. By encouraging Dr. Bike or, or somebody like him to be setting up shop very close by to this to encourage people who would like to cycle. Thank you, Chair. <coughs> um, cycle parking will be provided. All the houses will be provided with sheds that will allow for the storage of bikes. And cycle parking, which required through a condition to be submitted, will be provided for the apartments. So, yes, cycle parking is provided. And obviously throughout the site, there is a network of cycle routes that link into routes outside the site. So I think it, the development does cater for the need of cyclists. Right. Um, that's, that's all the questions. Thank goodness. Um, so that we are now to consider the recommendation, which is page... 
42, um, and the motion has been altered somewhat um, because one of the uh, supplementary, the, the conditions on the supplementary report was changed again. So the motion goes like this. Um, we move the recommendation as set out on page 42 of the agenda and as amended by the supplementary report with the exception of condition eight on page five of the supplementary report for which the wording shall remain as set out in condition seven on page 44 of the main agenda report. Um, is that seconded, please? Well, you know, I propose that. Is it seconded? I will second that for Thank you, you Chair. Much. Um, so we open in debate. Who would like to comment, please? Councillor Smith. Thank you, Chair. Um, first, I apologise if I appear to stumble on my words about I've got quite a severe uh, ocular migraine has come on during the course of the meeting, but I'd like to see this one through. Um, I, I first of all just want to reiterate uh, my sympathies, I think, for the residents of Crowthorne, as I, uh, I, I did speak on that issue uh, in my speech to the local plan on Tuesday. I don't want to repeat that at length, but I... Uh, I do feel that of all the allocations in the plan, this was the one I was personally least comfortable with, uh, particularly due to that erosion of the gap between Bracknell and, and Crowthorne. And, and, you know, I know previously this council has sought to protect that um, and there is still a gap, but it's it's getting ever smaller. Um, although for the reasons I, I stated on Tuesday, I did have to support the plan uh, and, and obviously for quite a number of members on the council and, and in, on this committee, uh, the point that we were elected last year was, was too late really to have any influence over it, unfortunately. Um, and, I, and I do stand by my vote for the plan. I do think it was incredibly important we approved it on Tuesday. With regards to the, the application, we obviously have to consider this against the fact that this is an allocated site. Uh, we obviously also need to consider this particularly in the light of the material relevance of the previous application and the appeal and the appeal inspector's ruling, which I think is quite significant. Uh, obviously, the, the sole reason the appeal inspector upheld the previous refusal was on the parking, uh, and I do acknowledge that this application has sought to address those issues uh, and does present a application that is now compliant with our parking SPD. Uh, I think once again, we've had discussions in committee around parking that, that highlight uh, issues with parking across the borough uh, and particularly in relation to our requirements in the SPD. Um, I think historically, a lot of these estates, there would have been more room to allow parking on the street uh, and the, the pressures on a lot of these developments now to absolutely maximise the use of the land mean that, that the roads typically aren't as wide and parking on the street is more of a problem. However, the SPD is the policy we have and it's the policy we have to judge this against ultimately. Um, for that reason, prior to the meeting, without having been predetermined, but, but my my sort of preliminary view was that I was likely to be supporting this application. Um, I've actually changed my mind during the course of the meeting this evening, uh, and the reason for that is, is around policy LP38 and the provision of the accessible units. Uh, and uh, I'm simply not satisfied with the answers we've received from officers tonight with regard to that. We have a policy. It's not a policy in relation to affordable housing. It's a policy in relation to all developments. It requires a minimum percentage of housing, uh, of units within a development to achieve that rating. Uh, and uh, we've not had the reassurances tonight that this application does. I don't think this is grounds to refuse the application. I think I, I cannot see any reason why this cannot be addressed with the developer. And I'm a bit frustrated that it hasn't been prior to this. Um, uh, so that, that's my view at this position. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Um, Councillor Barnard. Thank you very much. Can I first of all thank all our officers for answering nearly two hours worth of questions? And I think, you know, it just shows the 
huge amount of um, thought and deliberation has gone into it, and again, a very helpful site visit. Now, um, notwithstanding all the comments that, that Councillor Smith has made, I think there's some other things that we need to think very clearly about tonight. Um, since the appeal, we've adopted the local plan, and I think you know, within this council chamber, we have made some very, very clear and consistent past motions in relation to climate change and biodiversity. Those are motions of the council. This is the sovereign body. This sits here. And, you know, there have been repeated calls for us to, from a planning perspective, start to understand how that ties in with um, the delivery of the local plan policies. And I recognise that there will be significant work needing to be undertaken in terms of um, how we develop that feeling going forward. Um, I asked a question earlier, which was about, you know, developing housing on an agreed site that requires the removal of 10 hectares of trees. Um, and some suggestion that you can then replace half a hectare with broadleaf trees and in biodiversity once the last of 200 and something houses are built and suddenly you'll have a 10% net gain. It might not be the most perfect woodland, but it does actually, I think, really define the character of that part of Bracknell. We're not, we're not a million miles away from a place called Birch Hill. And we've also got, you know, sort of the pines and things like that. The Pine School named after the fact that actually housing was very effectively carved out from within pine trees without actually clearing the whole site. And residents that live there are generally very proud of the fact that they've retained that. Um, there are many other grounds where, unfortunately, we can't tackle it. Um, you know, apologies on the school thing. But, I mean, you know, I, I, I do actually know from <laughs> the work I did as a member that there are sufficient school places in South Bracknell. And indeed, there's a surplus. Um, so we, we, we can't really go for that. But I think overall there are a couple of other things. First of all, little road has, little, little comment has been made about the impact on South Road. This will be significant, will fundamentally, fundamentally change for me, and I think for many residents, how the Great Hollands Recreation Ground and that road actually sits there because we're going to lose a fair bit of that sort of green area at the top. I recognise some trees are being retained and I appreciate the, the, the efforts the officers have gone, but it will be a fundamentally different look and feel because you will be punching a road through to a housing development that will appear up, certainly during the winter months, from behind um, you know, a, a relatively narrow amount of screening. It's interesting in the developer presentation, no mention was made of the uh, landscaping, buffering and screening down South Road. And if you look at the picture before us, no effort has really been made to just suggest the impact of visibility displays. And we know from other developments in Bratton Forest that that's considerably more significant than shown there. I think, you know, you can have an identified site. I think, you know, it's an absolutely wonderful site where you could put self-build. I think we have accessibility criteria. Much has been made in the presentation around the delivery of affordable housing, the caveat being, you know, this hasn't been completely worked out. So I think it's an imperfect application, and we do have a new plan in place. And, you know, we, we can say, actually, go back, try harder in the light of the direction this council's taking. That doesn't mean we're saying no to housing on this site, but losing 10 hectares of trees, losing all that biodiversity and somehow magically recognising that whips and a few hedges and things planted in two to three years' time will make up from that might not actually hack it. So I have huge concerns about the development as it's put forward, and I will absolutely emphatically not be supporting the recommendation this evening because I think it is wrong in its form and shape for the area in the light of the direction this council is taking. Thank you, Councillor Barnard. Um, Councillor Mackenzie Boyle. Thank you. Um, this proposed development of up to 230 domestic dwellings on this site should be sustainable, and we must look at sustainable locational principles. And that is to ensure developments can only be permitted which are consistent with the character of the settlement and with its level of accessibility to services and infrastructure. In a nutshell, it's not this case, actually, in this development. Lack of amenities will encourage domestic transport trips. The use of the local nine-mile ride and old Woking Road, already heavily congested thoroughfares anyway, will have further traffic imposed on them. So that is contrary to policy LP60, Objective H, Development proposals will include the full assessment of and measures to minimise adverse transport impacts. According to the inspector's report, the development will be sorry will result in the loss of approximately, as we've had, 11 hectares of woodland. The creation of the access road from the Nine Mile Ride will result in a further loss of woodland, 0.42 hectares, contrary to policy LP48. 
protection and enhancement of trees. Planned on this site, as we've heard and discussed, 35%, possibly to 50% affordable housing. The risk is, will it be guaranteed delivered? This development will not be appropriate to support those residents due to lack of the amenities. We need to ensure those with disabilities and those with lack of funds due to the cost of living crisis will not have to depend on a car. The main modification, M49, now this development does not safeguard the landscape setting of the character of the adjacent settlements, nor does it conserve the existing settlements, which is contrary to this modification. The plans to develop Beaufort Park land, which although is outside the development boundary of Crowthorne, which it will ultimately impact, there will be harm to its distinctive character and of course that of Bracknell Town. The proposed development has in its content diminished the importance of modification M49, which has been reduced to a landscape function, no mention of physical impact or preventing coalescence. And that's contrary to new policy LP6, prevent protecting and enhancement of settlements and settings and distinct character of Crowthorne and Bracknell. Climate change, while well, this scheme does not con contribute to BFC's climate emergency initiative and the promise to residents that carbon emissions will be reduced, developing 230 dwellings will generate additional traffic on heavily congested local roads. And sorry, but it may impact air quality. Remember, the destruction of 11 hectares of trees to make way for houses, the main CO2 absorbers, and that's contrary to new policy LP37, climate change assessment. Colleagues, with the best will in the world, even with the provision of affordable housing, which I absolutely support and which we absolutely need, I can't support this application. And you know what? I'm really alarmed that the proposal actually is contrary to the new policies that are attached to it. So, as you say, I'm sorry, I just cannot support this application. Thank you. Would you like to turn off your microphone? Thank you. Councillor Pettenford. Well, as I agree with a lot of points that have made, um, people seem to be looking to it as a development on Crowthorne. It actually will impact South Bucknell much more. And there are facilities which are actually within walking distance of this. Account. I have qualms on other matters, but that's how I feel. I, I'm not sure how I feel. We need those houses. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else to speak? Councillor Reagan. Oh. Councillor Collins. Thank you. I've looked at that in detail. Um, I think no one wants new houses, no one wants change, but we have adopted the new local plan on Tuesday. LP6, as far as I can see, the um, proposal does meet the requirements of LP6. There is a map in there which seems to equate very well to the plan that is proposed in the planning application we're losing trees I don't want to lose trees but that was already proposed in LP6 before this planning application was put before us um, some of the climate change um, comments that have been made relate to our motion but our climate and biodiversity motion is not a planning policy. Um, I think we need to look at our policies in light of that motion and change them, but that work has not started yet. I'm torn, but I'm concerned that if this goes to appeal, we will lose it. Thank you. <coughs> Councillor O'Regan, please. Uh, yes, yeah, so, <clears throat> so as a council, we have adopted um, 
There's some very firm uh, resolutions about um, you know, the climate emergency, biodiversity. Uh, we also said that we would include and listen to, to residents, and I think that we've, we've done that job this evening um, in terms of the points that have been raised by the, um, the Growth on Action Group. Um, this is a, an, an old application, so it's a bit like an old application, but in, in the new bottle of the, the new plan. So it's comparing something that was approved before um, and lining up against um, our new plan. So obviously there's going to be some uh, surfaces there in terms of old versus new that need to be uh, debated. And I think they've been debated um, quite well. Um, yes, I agree. Um, more could have been done to uh, this, particularly South Road, in terms of um, screening and buffering and pr preserving uh, the forest nature uh, of that road. Um, but I'm being assured by the officers that this uh, development does fit and is consistent with the local plan and that we discussed at length and voted on on Tuesday. So I'm minded to support this application. Thank you. Personally, um, I, I did find this quite troublesome because it's loads of houses on top of a, a forest, which I really don't like. But when I think that the forest was um, it's mostly planted for a cash crop, um, then I have to face the fact that actually uh, the, the, the trees would go at some point anyway. And that was the sort of land that Roman Hill and uh, Wooden Hill was planted on in the same manner, I don't know, 50 years ago or whatever it was. Um, that's how we started. Um, we can find other places to put more trees. Um, we have been assured that the biodiversity um, challenges have been uh, they've been approached with a, with with rigor, um, because the biodiversity will be uh, increased and will be looked after for 125 years to come. Um, the character of the landscape thing troubled me. It's a real problem. Uh, but when I, when I realised that the inspector looked at this uh, in the local plan, he got rid of the strategic gaps. He wasn't at all concerned by this being in a wooded area. So I have to believe that actually if this went to, to um, appeal, then we would lose because the, uh, the inspector has, been, has looked at it in detail. Um, the traffic... Uh, situation has been looked at in detail. Um, the only thing that this lost on before was the parking. Um, so unfortunately, I I can't see a way forward. Um, and um, with this being um, being refused, and for my money, we really need those houses, we have so many families in deep despair because they don't have decent housing. Um, and yes, we can talk about more adaptability, uh, but this is a start. And I think we can, we can work in the future on the local, the local plan being more adhered to Ah, I think that's enough. Um, um, regard the pine trees. I, li I bought my house because of all I'm the pine sorry, trees. Sorry, you've already spoken. Yeah, you're right. 
Okay. Sorry, sorry you've, you've spoken. You only speak once. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Yeah. sorry. Yeah. Would you like to I'm just saying most of them have been chopped down. <laughs> no. Yeah. Would you like to switch off? Thank you. Yes. Councillor Hayes. Yes. Well, it, the last one and was it, the planning application was refused uh, and uh, because of um, parking. I'm looking at this development. I, I'm sure it, it's covered by the officers, and I do appreciate the work our officers do on this. Mm. But I still have my very grave concerns that we are overdeveloping on a site somewhere that um, we're going to lo lose the word that I always insisted on using, and that is forest, not Bracknell, but Bracknell Forest. Mm and our trees, and if this was a lower density or something like that, but I, I have grave concern about the highways. If you take, and I, I'm sure an officer will realize what I'm, an area called the parks. The amount of problems there with parking, and we said it was, it, it was sufficient and all the rest of it. And then the change in, it, you know, it, I, I'm gravely concerned with the density of what is on there, sir, on it. And I would like a recorded vote. Recorded vote. Is that okay? Um, do we have any other speakers? Okay. Um, the motion is proposed and seconded. Um, all those in favour? Well, oh, I beg your pardon? Yes, you can go down. Oh, sorry, yes. <laughs> Please, would you do the recorded vote? Um, so, uh, first up, Councillor Barnard. Councillor Brown? Four. Uh, Councillor Collins? Could you switch on your microphone when you do that? Sorry. Sorry. Four. Uh, Councillor Frewer. Four. Uh, Councillor Hayes. Against. Uh, Councillor Mackenzie Boyle. Against. Councillor O'Regan. Four. Councillor Penfold. Four. And Councillor Smith. Against. And Councillor Zahirudin. Against. Uh, so that's 5 uh, The chair's vote carries. I have the casting vote. Yeah. Uh, so it's, it's carried. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for attending. I'm sorry that it didn't go as you wanted, I have to say. <laughs> no, no choice, I think. Anyway, thank you. No, that's, that's not the problem of this. No. Thank you. Have we, oh, have we finished recording? Sorry.